gentleman uh, Sarah Casey has already raised uh, what he knows is an important issue to me and I think probably himself and other members uh, on the committee and that is uh, the defensive posture of the United States uh, with regards to developing uh, various defensive systems. As we know, uh, different administrations have had a different view of the appropriateness of doing so. And so I've, I've got a number of questions uh, about that and uh, I, I, would, I would start with this. What in the world was that doing in here in the first place? Why, why it, you say, well, we weren't planning on using the old tubes in either the submarines or, or land-based. Why, uh, why is this in the, in the treaty in the first place? I mean, this is supposed to be, as I understand it, an offensive uh, weapons uh, treaty. And uh, I know the Russians, uh, this has always bothered them about us trying to defend ourselves. To me, the most important uh, uh, function of a government is to defend itself, and I'm 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 very very troubled by this. Can I get your comments? I don't don't know why this is in the treaty. I'm confident it in no way it restricts us in no way from doing anything that we plan to do. So I'm not it does not bother me. I'm not concerned about it. The question is better addressed to the negotiators. I think this was regarded as a throwaway uh, on their part because we were not planning to use the silo, Minuteman silos, et cetera, for uh, defensive missiles. I understand that uh, whoever it is that's uh, speaking right now for the administration doesn't plan that, but administrations change. And it is entirely possible, I would think, that uh, in the future uh, uh, these uh, uh, apparatus will be considered to be used for uh, for defensive purposes. So, uh, again, it just I, I just can't understand why they would uh, why they would have uh, Im incorporated that in there. I, I can understand your expression of concern, Senator. I think that the reality is that is nothing in the treaty that is problematic. I think that the the problem will exist at the continued Russian pressure on us with regard to missile defense, as reflected in the uh, preamble. Yeah, um, the, the issue to me becomes more complex <clears throat> as we go forward and attempt to guard ourselves from an attack from Iran or North Korea, which of course is an entirely different proposition than our relationship with the Russians, which relies on a mutual destruction sort of uh, uh, philosophy. Not so with the uh, with the Iranians and, and North Koreans, and they don't think the same ways th that the Russians do, and so we're gonna have to think about defending ourselves differently. So you can understand why I'm concerned about that issue being raised in any way in this treaty. Is that a legitimate concern? I think that it's a, a legitimate concern. Uh, I do not think that we will be inhibited by this treaty or even by the Russian pressure with respect to defending ourselves against North Korea and ultimately against Iran because those deployments are much lower. In the case of Iran, we are uh, dealing primarily with regional missile defenses and they are in no way inhibited by this treaty. Uh, however, during the course of this treaty, if you believe those that are trying to predict forward, they believe that the uh, Iranians and, uh, and the North Koreans will develop sufficient uh, missile technology to reach substantially further than what they do now. Would that be a fair statement? I think there's no question about that. that the uh, that the, we have evidence of the North Koreans reaching in that direction. We have flimsier evidence with regard to <laughs> Iran, but ultimately they are going to go in that direction. And we will need to take protection against them as modest nuclear powers, as opposed to China or Russia, which will be major nuclear powers. Um, finally, uh, and, and I'll wrap up, Mr. Chairman, but finally, uh, I'm assuming that uh, that you gentlemen have read the unilateral statements uh, from each of the parties, and uh, the in regards to my concerns about the, our defensive posture, uh, the unilateral statement by the Russians 
is problematic and uh, uh, certainly uh, uh, doesn't help resolve the, the questions that I have. In my judgment, it would seem to me that the Russians need to be straightened out on this issue because we obviously view it differently than they do. Have you got any suggestions as to how we do this as we go forward uh, if we are to ratify this treaty? On this particular issue, we've been trying to straighten out the Russians okay. for many years. We have been unsuccessful to this point. Uh, if you go back and, and look at the discussions of the, under the SORT treaty, for example, and the run-up to the SORT treaty, you have exactly the same line from the Russians that you have today. I think that is likely to remain a perennial issue for them, and that uh, our position will have to be that we will resist those pressures from Russia. I think the issue, as uh, Dr. Schlesinger has said, has been a disagreement between the two of our countries for a long time. I think going into the future, the best way of dealing with this issue, of confronting this issue, would be through the Consultative Commission, which is set up under this treaty. This at least gives us a, 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 a forum which, which, with, for, in which we can meaningfully discuss these issues and gives us some better chance at arriving at a mutual understanding than we now have. It's not an issue that we will be able to deal with through trading press releases, but we might be able to get some progress on it but through this consultative forum. For the Russians, it is not only a serious issue in their minds, but more than that, it is a political battering ram that they have been using against us over the years, and I don't think that we will persuade them to give it up. Gentlemen, my time's up, and I thank you for your candid answers, and I thank you, Mr. Chairman.